Hello, my name is Chase, a member of the iWare team, and today I'd like to walk you through GaySense. I'll be covering two use cases, the simple screen-based use case for eye tracking on laptops or simple monitors, and the 3D use case for real-world scenarios such as automotive, retail, or simulator use. You'll see this user interface after you download the app and enter the activation key provided to you. I'd first like to bring your attention to the top left corner where we see three icons, the user, the setup, and the device. The user pertains to the calibration options. Generic represents automatic calibration in which tracking will occur automatically to anyone who enters the range of the camera which is approximately one meter. The calibrated option can be used to fine tune the tracking results for a particular person and improve the accuracy of tracking. This is highly suggested in controlled environments. Users can be added by clicking the green button on the right. From here, you may add a user, rename them, and then simply click OK. Before we continue the calibration process, we need to confirm our device. We highly recommend the Intel RealSense D415 camera, but we're also compatible with the Orbeck Astra Embedded S. Now you'll notice four checkboxes below the icons on the left the screen mode, which we'll get to momentarily, the external communication port for API access, the export CSV data, if you'd like to record your tracking session, and the point of regard on the screen, which we'll discuss at the end. So let's continue with the screen-based use case by selecting the screen mode and confirming the exact measurements. For my setup, I have the camera placed at the bottom of the screen. The distance along the bottom border is about 18 centimeters, which is center screen. You'll see a few sensors on the face of your camera. Uh, the camera's center is considered as the furthest sensor from the plug-in cable. Very importantly is the camera tilt. You'll notice that your natural sitting position sometimes requires that the camera be tilted upwards towards your face. It's important to make that adjustment here. Consider the vertical axis of your laptop screen as 90 degrees. So if your laptop screen is even with the face of your camera, this value should be 0 degrees, such as mine. And now you're ready to start tracking. So let's click Connect. And we can zoom in on the gizmo viewer and rotate it. On the main screen, you'll see our 3D viewer, and you can select different views as well, such as the 3D viewer, which we have here, the 2D viewer, or both. Now clearly the orange lines represent the gaze vectors, and the reference frame represents the head pose. All of this data and more can be streamed by API or recorded as mentioned. I'd also like to bring your attention to the toggles at the top of the screen, where we can toggle what's being displayed, as well as the view. When your session is complete, simply press disconnect And you're done. And this concludes the overview of our screen-based eye tracking use case. Now I'd like to take you through the features we've developed for 3D environments. So we'll deselect screen mode and return to the setup. Here you'll see a few templates that will assist you in creating your environment and any saved environments below. 
Let's use an automotive use case as an example. Now we enter the Setup Builder, where you can adjust the objects represented. For example, let's edit the windshield. Simply select the item on the left, and you'll see the editing options. Of course you'll want to take the measurements of your real environment first, then match the sizes and angles. So in this case, you can resize the width and height. So let's say the width is 140 centimeters and the height is 90. Oops. And let's say the tilt is a bit more dramatic than what we're seeing. Let's say 50 degrees. There. You can also add and subtract options. For example, perhaps we might want to get rid of the wheel object. So simply press the trash can. Uh, and let's say we'd like to add a display above the center console. So we can see the green circle with the add um, symbol in the um, middle. Um, we also have this additional option where you can quickly add items directly above or below the selected option. Let's get rid of the previous one and let's just work on this display. So let's make it a bit smaller. Let's say 20 centimeters by, eh, let's do 20 by 20. Simple as that. And then we want to bring it down the Y axis. So it rests. I believe we should be able to zoom in here. To pan, Oops. simply press shift as we're clicking and dragging. And let's lessen the tilt a bit more. Oops. There we go. And perhaps it's rotated just a little bit towards the driver. Let's say 10 degrees, however you have it set up in the real environment, uh, you can replicate it easily here. So to save this scenario, simply click the Save button. and then press select the setup. Let's select the export CSV data option to record it to a file for later. And you can also decide what data to export to your CSV file. Simply go to settings and press data export. There we can see the columns we can export and also choose the folder that we export to. Now one final note before we begin is that you can easily import and export the scenarios via the file menu. After that, you simply ensure your camera is connected and click connect. Okay, let's zoom out a bit here. There we go. As before, the multiple views and toggle buttons mentioned previously remain accessible. After your session is complete, again, press disconnect. Now to access the data you've recorded, simply open your file manager go to users select the user the .iware file gaze sense cache csv 
and the most recent session. Here you'll see the data that was recorded. Uh, the user we selected was generic. Um, we have that by timestamp uh, and then an XY coordinates in pixels in relation to the attention target on the right hand side here. So, ah, and also the confidence score. So we can see that the windshield with the XY coordinates uh, were being recorded at 0 0.34, 0 0.44 seconds and so on. We also have the intersection, which refers to the black cube that you saw on the screen um, for the X, Y, Z. The head position, X, Y, Z coordinates, as well as the head rotation. Finally, I wanted to show you the latest development from eyewear, which is the visual point of regard on the screen, available in screen mode. So I'm going to select screen mode, click the show point of regard on screen button, and click connect. Now streamers can use this for coaching, presentations can be more informative, and user experience studies can be easily observed. So this concludes our walkthrough of GaySense app. Please take note that all of the features you've seen here and more are available through our SDK. I hope this has been useful for those of you trying GaySense for the first time. And feel free to reach out to us at contact at eyewear.tech for any further questions or to get started now. Thanks, guys, and hope to hear from you soon.